Hello everyone, my name is Cesar Rizvi. I am a human rights lawyer and a gold medalist law graduate from School of Law, University of Karachi. I am a research fellow at Global Institute of Law. In this video, I am going to discuss about children rights under international arena. I have divided my video into three parts. Part one is related to the CRC, which is the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And the second one is related to the child labor, which is the worst form of economic exploitation. Third part is based on the child under international criminal justice system. The early signs of the move to recognize and protect children's rights are evident in the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, which was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948. The UDHR stated that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. It also stresses that the motherhood and the childhood are entitled to special care and protection. And it also refers to the family as the natural and fundamental group or unit of the society. Convention on the Rights of the Children. United Nations General Assembly unanimously adopted the Convention on the Rights of the Child on 20th November 1989, and it entered into force or became legally binding on the state parties in September 1990. The Convention has become the most widely accepted human rights treaty ever. It has been almost universally ratified, and out of 193 United Nations member states, only two countries have not ratified it that is the USA and Somalia. But according to the report of UNICEF, on October 2nd, 2015, Somalia ratified the convention. The convention proclaimed that the children are human beings and are the subject of their own rights and childhood is entitled to special care and assistance. For full development of the child's personality, he should grow up in family environment and should grow up in an atmosphere of happiness, love, peace, and understanding. Article 1 to 41 outlines that the human rights of every child must be protected and respected. Article 40 to 45 covers the obligation on the state parties to disseminate and implement the convention's principle and to monitor the progress towards the realization of the child rights. Article 46 to 54 covers the process of accession and ratification of the convention by the state parties. In May 2000, two optional protocols to the convention were also adopted by the General Assembly. Optional protocol one is the involvement of children in armed conflict and the two is the sale of children, child prostitution, and child pornography. Article one of the convention defines the word child. For the purposes of present convention, a child means all human beings under the age of 18 years, unless the relevant national laws recognize an earlier age for a specific purpose, this must do so in the context of the convention's guiding principle. And Article 2 focuses on the principle of non-discrimination. State parties shall take all appropriate measures to ensure that the child is protected, um, child is protected against all forms of discrimination or punishment based on the status, activities, express opinions, or beliefs of the child's parents, legal guardians, or family members. The right guaranteed under the CRC can be categorized under the following four heads. First one is related to the rights to have loving and peaceful family environment. Second one is related to the social rights in general. And the third one is based on the rights of individual in a society. And fourth one is based on the protection against violence and exploitation. If we discuss about the first category, that is the right to have loving and peaceful family environment, then Article 5 of the Convention focuses on the right of parents. 
the convention respects the responsibilities, rights, and duties of the parents or the members of the extended family or community, legal guardian, or other persons legally responsible for the child. Article 6 focuses on the survival and development. Every child has the inherent right to life. The state's parties have to ensure to the maximum extent the possible, possible the survival and development of the child. Article 9 focuses on the no separation from parents. The child shall, shall, shall not be separated from his or her parents against their will. The competent authorities can determine in accordance with applicable laws and procedure that such separation is necessary for the best interest of child. Article 10 is based on the right of reunion. Every child or parents have right to enter or leave a state party for the purposes of family re reunification. And the state party shall deal with such application in a positive, human, and expeditious manner right to privacy and family is in article 16. Article 16 is stated that uh, every child has the right to privacy, family, home, or free correspondence. Article 18 focuses on the common responsibilities of the parents, that both the parents have the common responsibility for the upbringing and development of the child. If there is no family environment for a child, then there must be an alternate to family environment. And Article 20 focuses on these principles that the special protection should be given. The child who is temporarily or permanently deprived of his or her family environment or in whose own interest cannot be allowed to remain in the environment is entitled to special protection and assistance. And Article 21 also focuses on the right of adoption. The state parties recognize or permit the system of adoption shall ensure that the best interest of the child shall be paramount consideration in the adoption. Second category is based on social rights in general. Article 4, which focuses on the economic and social rights, the convention directs state parties to undertake all appropriate legislative, administrative, and other measures for the implementation of the rights recognized in the present for the implementation of the rights recognized in the present convention. Article 24 focuses on the health rights. The child has the right to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standards of health and to facilities for the treatment of illness and rehabilitation of health. Article 26 focuses on the social security of every child, that every child has the right to benefit from social security, including social insurance, and state shall take the necessary measures to achieve the full realization of this right in accordance with the national laws. Article 27 focuses on the educate standard of living. Every child has a right to a standard of living educate for his physical, mental, spiritual, moral, and social development. And the parents or other responsible for the child have the primary responsible for the same. Article 28 is based on the right to education. The child has the right to education and the state with the view to achieving this right progressively and on the basis of equal opportunity shall first make primary education compulsory and available free to all. Second, encourage the development of different forms of secondary education and vocational education. Uh, may, Third, make educational and vocational information and guidance available and accessible to all children. And fourth, the take, to take measures to encourage regular attendance of, at schools and the reduction of dropout rates. And take all appropriate measures to ensure that school discipline is administered. Article 29 
focuses on the right to purpose of education, the child has the right not only to the education, but to a meaningful education, which shall be directed to the development of the child's personality, talent, and mental and physical abilities to their fullest potential. Article 30 focuses on the right of minority child, the child belonging to ethnic, religious, or linguistic minorities, or persons of indigenous origin, shall not be denied the right in community with other members of his or her, her group. Right of the disabled child under Article 23. A disabled child must be protected and must be rehabilitated and it, his or her right should be protected. The article 22 focuses on the right of refugee. The child who is seeking refugee status or who is considered a refugee in accordance with the applicable international domestic laws shall whether unaccompanied or accompanied by his or her parents or by any other person receive appropriate protection and humanitarian assistance. Third category focuses on right of an individual in a society. First, right of registration, which is guaranteed under Article 7. Every child has the right from the birth to a name and right to acquire a nationality, and as far as possible, the right to know and be cared for by his or her parents. Article 8 focuses on the right to identity, Every child has the right to preserve his or her right to identity, including nationality, name, and family relations as recognized by the law without unlawful interference. Article 12, right of participation. The state party shall ensure to the child who is capable of forming his or her own views the right to express those views freely in all matters affecting the child. Article 13, based on freedom of expression. Every child has a right to freedom of expression. This right shall include freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds. Article 14, freedom of conscience. Every child has a right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. However, the parents and when applicable legal guardians have right to provide directions to the child in the exercise of his or her right in a manner consistent with the involve, evolving capacities of the child. Article 15 is based on the freedom of association and assembly, and to, uh, but it must be related to the peaceful assembly. Article 31 is based on right to rest and leisure. The child has the right to rest and leisure to engage in play and recreational activities appropriate to the age of the child and to participate freely in cultural life and arts. Fourth category is based on the protection against violence and exploitation. Protection against violence under Article 19. Article 19 stated that the child has to be protected from all forms of physical and mental or mental violence, injury or abuses, neglect or negligent treatment, maltreatment or exploitation, including sexual abuses. Article 32 focuses on the protection from economic exploitation. The child has a right to be protected from economic exploitation from performing any work that is likely to be hazardous or to interfere with the child's education, or to be harmful for the child's health or physical, mental, spiritual, moral, and social development. Article 33 focuses on the protection from drug. State parties are obliged to take all appropriate measures, including legislative, administrative, social, educational, to protect from illicit use of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. Article 34 is based on the protection from sexual exploitation. The child has the right of protection from all forms of sexual exploitation. 
Article 35 is protection from abduction and sale. The parties are bound to take all appropriate measures to prevent the abduction of sale or tra trafficking of children from any purposes or in any form. Article 36 is protection from any kind of exploitation. Child has a right of protection against all other forms of exploitation, judicial to any aspects of the child's welfare. Article 37, which is the protection from inhuman treatment. Every child has the right to be protected from torture or other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment or punishment. The capital punishment or life imp imprisonment without the possibility of release cannot be imposed for offenses committed by the child. The child cannot be deprived of his or her liberty unlawfully or arbitrarily. The first thing which focus in this article is the capital punishment and the life imprisonment should not be imposed for any offense. The second thing is the, uh, the he or she cannot be deprived of his or her liberty unlawfully or arbitrarily. Third thing is the arrest, detention, or imprisonment of a child. Imprisonment of a child shall be in conformity with the law and shall be used only as a measure of last resort and for the shortest appropriate period of time. Fourth thing is that every child deprived of liberty should be treated with humanity and in a manner which takes into account the needs of a person of his or her age. Fifth thing is that he should be, every child deprived of liberty should be separated from adults unless it is considered in the child's best interest not to do so. The right to maintain contact with his or her family. Sixth one is, sixth principle is based on the um, every child deprived of his or her liberty shall have the right to prompt access to legal and other appropriate assistance. And he must have, or he or she must have the right to challenge the legality of the deprivation of his or her liberty before an independent court or impartial authority. Article 38 is the protection in armed conflict, the which is usually considered as a uh, child soldier. The rules of international humanitarian law applicable to the children in armed conflict should be respected. The children who have not attained the age of 15 years cannot take a direct part in hostilities. Any child who has not attained the age of 15 years cannot be recruited into the armed forces. Article 39 is based on the recovery and reintegration of victimized children. It is the duty of the state to take all appropriate measures to promote physical and psychological recovery and social reintegration of a child victim of any form of neglect, exploitation, abuse, torture, or any other form of cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment or punishment or in armed um, conflict. Means, means every child victim must be reintegrated into the social life. Article 40 focuses on the protection of law. Every child alleged as accused or of recognized as having infringed the penal laws has a right to be treated in a manner consistent with the promotion of the child's sense of dignity <clears throat> and which takes into account the child's age and the desirability of promoting child's reintegration. Every such child shall be presumed innocent until proven guilty. He must be informed promptly the charges against him or her, have the right the matter to be determined without delay, and not to be compelled to give testimony or to confess guilt, have the right to an appeal to a higher competent, independent, and impartial authority, and have free assistance of an interpreter if the child cannot understand or speak the language used.
child labor. Article 32 of CRC, Convention on the Rights of Child, prohibits any kind of economic exploitation of a child. And also in Article 36, it prohibits any kind of exploitation. And we can see the child labor considered as the worst form of economic exploitation. International labor standards, international labor organization constituted a legal instrument to set out basic principles and rights at work. The ILO has designed the following eight core conventions, freedom of association, right to recognize and collective bargaining, forced labor convention, elimination of all forms of force or compulsory labor, minimum age for admission to employment, elimination of worst forms of child labor, equal remuneration convention, and discrimination in employment and occupation convention. Two of the conventions, that is the minimum age for admission to the employment and the elimination of worst forms of child labor are related to the child labor rights, rights of children and not to be exploited. Convention concerning the minimum age for the admission to the employment, 1973. The convention focuses on different age, ages under which a child can do work. The convention focuses on the abolition of child labor and to raise the minimum age for admission to the employment and work to a level consistent with the fullest physical and mental development of a young person. It is specified the minimum age for the employment. Minimum age shall not be, the convention focuses that the minimum age shall not be less than that the age of completion of compulsory schooling and in any case shall not be less than 15 years. Convention when allows the 14 years of age minimum as minimum age. Member states whose economic and educational facilities are insufficient may after consultation with the employer and workers concerned specify a minimum age for 14 years. Convention when it is specified the minimum age as 18 years. In case of any hazardous work, which may jeopardize the health, safety, or morals of the young person, the minimum age should not be less than 18 years of age. Minimum age of 16 years. It also relaxes the national to the state parties and stated that the national laws may after the consultation with the organization of employers and workers concerned, authorize employment, your work, as from the age of 16 years on the following condition. That first, the, that the health, safety, and morals of young persons are fully protected. Second, receive adequate specific instruction. And third, receive vocational training. The convention that it focuses that the minimum age should be between or maybe between 13 to 15 years on light work, not harmful for, to their health or development and not prejudiced to their attendance at school. The convention is applicable as minimum to the following. That is the mining and quarrying, manufacturing, construction industries, electricity, gas and water, industries, sanitary services, transport, storage, and communication services, plantation, and other agriculture undertakings, mainly producing for commercial purposes. But it excludes from the convention that the convention does not apply to the following, that the family and small scale holdings producing for local consumption and not regularly employ the higher workers. Work done by children and young persons, in schools for general, vocational, or technical education, or in other training institutions. Work done by persons at least 14 years of age in undertakings in accordance with the conditions prescribed by the competent authority and is an integral part of the course of education or training. Performance in artistic performance after consultation with the employers and workers concerned. <clears throat> Second convention is related to the convention concerning the prohibition and immediate action for the elimination of the worst forms of child labor. The convention shall apply to all persons under the age of 
18 years. It stresses that the child labor to the great extent is caused by poverty and the long-term solution lies in sustainable economic growth or development. The term worst forms of child labor comprises all forms of slavery or practices like slavery, such as the sale and trafficking of child, dead bondage, serfdom, and force or compulsory labor, including force or compulsory recruitment of children for use in armed conflicts. Second is use, procuring, or offering of a child for prostitution, for the protection of production of pornography or for pornographic performances. Third is use, procuring, or offering of a child for illicit activities, in particular for the production and trafficking of drugs. And fourth one is related to any work which is likely to harm health, safety, or morals of children. Third part of our video is based on children under the international criminal justice system. When we talk about when we talk about children under the international criminal justice system, then we can see he may be a he or she may be a victim or witness or may stand for trial as a defendant. When a child is stands as a victim. According to the report of a special representative of the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflicts, uh, the report dated 26 July 2021, resolution number 74-133, the trends in grave violations. In 2020, the United Nations verified an overall number of 26,425 grave violations against children, including 2,479 that occurs prior to 2020, but were only verified in 2020. A total of 19,379 children were victims or survivors of at least one of the four grave violations affecting individual children. One, first recruitment and use of children. Second, killing and maiming. Third, rape and other forms of sexual violences. And fourth is abduction. When we look at the report of recruitment and use of children, and total number of 8,521 children were recruited and used in armed conflicts. 8, more than 8,400 children were killed and maimed and the rape and other forms of sexual violence were increased by 70% in 2020. And the abduction cases were also increased by 90% in 2020. Security Council's monitoring and reporting mechanism. Security Council took the unprecedented step of establishing a monitoring and reporting mechanism, MRM, and it highlighted the following six grave violations committed against children in times of armed conflict, which includes killing and maiming, recruitment and use of children by armed forces and armed groups, sexual violence against children, attack against the schools or hospitals, abduction of children, denial of humanitarian access for children. Now we will discuss that what are the crimes against children under Rome Statute of International Criminal Court. For this purpose, first of all, we will try to understand that what are the international crime as defined in Rome Statute. Genocide, which is refers to an act committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. Second one is crimes against humanity, 
which include the widespread killing, including inter-area murder, enslavement, torture, persecution, deportation, or forcible transfer of population. War crimes are violations of the laws of war, including crimes such as willful killing, torture, and degrading in human, in human treatment. It also includes the directing of attacks against civilians and the passing of sentences without due process, rape, and other forms of sexual violence, as well as recruitment of children under the age of 15 years into the armed forces. Now, we will discuss that what are the articles and what are the crimes which are which can be committed against children. Under Article 6E, that is genocide, in which a forcible transferring of children of the group to another group. Article 7, crimes against humanity. 1C, like Article 7, Clause 1C, stated that the enslavement, and 2C defines that enslavement means the exercise of any or all of the powers attaching to the rights of ownership over a person and includes the exercise of such power in the course of trafficking in person and in particular women and children. Article 8, subclause, Article 8, clause 2, and subclause B, 26. Which stated that um, which talks about war crimes, conscripting or enlisting children under the age of fifteen years under the national armed forces or using them to participate actively in hostilities, and these are considered as child soldiers is a war crime. Crimes against children under Convention on the Rights of the Child. Now we will discuss that what are the crimes against or what are the crimes which may be committed against children under the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Article 38, Clause 2 focuses that the state party shall take all feasible measures to ensure that the persons who have not attained the age of the 15 years do not take a direct part in hostilities. And if such person who did not attain the age of 15 years participate in hostilities, then it will be considered as a crime means who recruits such persons as a child soldier commits crime. Optional Protocol 2000 of CRC, Article 2, 3, and 4. State parties shall ensure that persons who have not attained the age of 18 years are not compulsorily recruited into their armed forces. Article 33 focuses that state parties shall raise the minimum age of the voluntary recruitment of the persons into their national armed forces from that set out in Article 38. But Article, 30, Article 3 of the Option Protocol of CRC provides an exception to the recruitment rule under the head of voluntary recruitment of a child. But the age must be above 18. Article 4 stated that armed groups that are distinct from the armed forces of a state should not, under any circumstances, recruit or use in hostilities persons under the age of 18 years. State parties should take all feasible measures to prevent such recruitment and use them, including the adoption of legal measures necessary to prohibit and criminalize such practices. Second thing, when child stands as a witness. International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia and International Criminal Tri Tribunal for Rwanda. These both tribunals, ICTY and ICTR, did not involve children to any great extent. Through approximately 4% of witnesses at the ICTY were aged 18 to 30 years, and many of these adults' witnesses were children at the time of the commission of the crime. SCSL, Special Court for Sierra Leone, said to try those who bear greatest responsibility for the war crimes and crimes against humanity committed during Sierra Leone Civil War. Total, very small number of people, uh, number of children were witnesses at that time. That is, the total 11 child witnesses were called. 
and they were assured that they would not be prosecuted if they revealed that they had committed the crimes as a child. Those who recruited children under the age of 15 and used them as an active partisan in hostilities were all prosecuted for the first it was the first time ever when the persons who have recruited the child soldiers were prosecuted icc international criminal code the code has limited jurisdiction which includes over the people from the state ratified the Rome Statute, over the person who is alleged to have committed the crimes on the territory of the state parties who ratified the convention, uh, Rome Statute, and the United Nations Security Council may also refer the situation to the prosecutor. The first case tried by the ICC in which a child was called as a witness is the trial of Lubenga, Thomas Lubenga who was charged with the unlawful use and recruitment of children under the age of 15. In this case, the experience of the first witness in Lubanga case illustrates the difficulties in balancing participation with the protection of children in justice process. In January 2009, a former child soldier gave a was called by the office of a prosecutor to tes testify against Thomas Lubanga who was the leader of the militia into which he had been recruited. Means the, that child was recruited. Upon taking this stand, it was testified that when in fifth grade, he along with other school children was kidnapped by the soldiers and taken to the military camp. As the hearing progressed, the child became frightened and eventually recanted his testimony entirely. Two weeks later, the child took the stand again and repeated his initial testimony, explaining that the first time he gave evidence before the court, a lot of things went through his mind. In particular, he felt threatened and scared by the presence of the defendant, his former recruiter and commander in the courtroom. When called a second time, the child gave evidence from behind the screen. The defendant was no longer able to make eye contact or to intimidate the witness. This inc incident demonstrates that the need for the protective measures for children who give evidence and also highlights the need to familiarize child witnesses prior to the trial with the layout of the courtroom. The person is likely to be present and procedures to be followed. Now we will discuss but that what are the reasons for appearance of few children as a witnesses in cr international crimes or armed conflicts after uh, in prosecution. Uh, the first one is the few trials involve violations against children. Second thing is a significant time lapse between the end of the conflict and starting of the trial so that a child becomes settled. And third is the re less reliable than adults witness. Fourth one is the tainted, their witnesses, their ev the evidence, their statement may be tainted, more inclined to give those answers which they think adults wants to hear, may take their cue from adults' interview or assist them, child may face reprisal, may suffer re-traumatization, may become re-frightened. Non-judicial processes and TRCs. Non-judicial mechanism may provide a better opportunity to have their voices heard. It may enable community reconciliation, provide immediate accountability, reparation for losses and damages, and also allow children to move on with their lives. TRC, that is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The most common non-judicial mechanism is TRC. There are more than 25 TRCs worldwide. Sierra Leone and Liberian TRC. Children participated in TRC. The selling features of that TRC are, were uh, ch child-friendly procedures were adopted in accordance with the CRC, Convention on the Rights of Child. 
Children were, were involved in statement taking, close thematic hearings were held, preparation of first children's version of the final TR report. Right to privacy, confidentiality, and anonymity were all protected, and children come to give evidences on voluntary basis. Child when stand for trial as a defendant. In such a case, he may be detained, but the child has the right to challenge the detention. He or she must be protected. And the protection of child who are subject to the prosecution and trial must be ensured. The purpose of any such sentence should be to rehabilitate and to reintegrate the child into the social life. The forms which what are the common forms of association of children? Involvement may be transitory or long-term, may be associated with armed groups or at risk of recruitment, and some are engaged in direct combat activities and other take auxiliary roles like spies, posters, cooks, etc. Some of these works are under the duress of adults' commands. As we all know that these works are usually under the duress of adult commands. And in such a situation, this is considered as the crimes are uh, against children and the war crimes. It may also consider it as the war crime. United Nations view about children's detention is the child, children associated with the armed groups should not be detained or prosecuted but should be treated as victims by virtue of their age and force nature of their association. The Paris principle focuses that the children who are accused of crimes under international law allegedly committed while they were associated with armed groups or armed forces should be considered primarily as victims, not as the perpetrators. And why they should consider it as the victim because they have been forcefully recruited. If usually they have been forcefully recruited, if prosecution goes forward and the child is convicted, then Paris principles and CRC require that the purpose of the punishment should be to promote rehabilitation and reintegration into the community and not to punish Internment of a child, when child is detained, and what is the, which kind of punishment and should be given to the child. So the administrative detention or preventive detention should be given that in a few states, children who have been associated with armed groups or are at risk of being recruited may be seen by the state in question as a security threat rather than changing such a child with criminal offense and bringing the child to the trial and state will decide to place the child in administrative de detention. During the internal armed conflict of Nepal, a series of ordinances gave power to arrest and detain children, individual in preventive and administrative detentions for the period of up to 12 months. Children suspected of being associated with the armed groups were held in administrative detention under these instruments, in the same facilities as ever. But United Nations Security Council in its report 2006-2007 reported that the children detained in administrative de detention had been subjected to the torture or ill treatment. This, these are the reports which shows that usually children who has been in, detained or in preventive detention or in administrative detention are usually subjected to the torture or inhuman or degrading treatment. Prisoners of war. In practice, child prisoners of war are very rare. And no cases have been registered since Second World War. According to the Article 77, Clause 4 of General Convention 3, Children who have been detained as prisoners of war 
must be held in quarters separated from the adults, deta adult detainees, except where accommodated with adult family members, which means it focuses on the three principles, that is the children who have been detained as prisoners of war must be held in a separate quarter. Second thing, must be separated from the adult detainees. Third thing, exception to the principle, that is they must, they if they were accommodated with their adult family members. When they are detained, they must have the right to challenge the detention. Under international humanitarian, uh, international humanitarian law, a person interned in an international armed conflict has the right to challenge the decision to detain them. The decision to intern a minor must be reviewed as soon as possible and at least twice yearly by an appropriate court or administrative board designated by the detaining power for that purpose, which, show, which means the, they must have the right to challenge and their decision must be reviewed as soon as possible and at least twice yearly by an appropriate court. International laws on internment. Like what are the laws which mention the internment for a child? Following international laws are applicable on internment of children. Additional Protocol 2 of the Geneva Convention, Protection of Victims of International Armed Conflicts, Article 37B of CRC, the arrest, detention, or imprisonment of a child shall be in conformity with the law. Article 9 of ICCPR, children shall not be deprived of liberty unlawfully and arbitrarily, but lawfully they can be deprived from their liberty. During the criminal prosecution, children must may not be prosecuted for the lawful acts of violence during the conflict. However, a child competent may be brought before the tribunal for the alleged commission of war crimes. It is rare to have child prisoners of war in modern day armed conflicts as most of the conflicts today are non-international armed conflicts, but during the prosecution of, the, of a child, two key questions to be considered by the courts or tribunals are First one is the jurisdiction, that whether the court has a jurisdiction to try the case against the child. And second thing is the criminal responsibility, that is the whether child has criminal responsibility. Article 77, clause 2 of the Additional Protocol 1 sets a minimum age of war crimes as 15 years old. An International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia and International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda fix no minimum age for criminal responsibility but neither indicted anyone under the age of 18 years. Special Court for Sierra Leone also gave a special jurisdiction to the court over any child who was age 15 or more at the time of the commission of the crime. And Rome statute of our International Criminal Court under Article 26, exclude jurisdiction over the person under the 18 at the time of the commission of the crime. Now we will discuss what are the nature of punishment which can be imposed on children. Article 37 of the Convention on the Rights of Children prohibits the capital punishment and life imprisonment. Convention against torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. Article 22. Article 2 focuses on the prohibition of torture against children. Customary international humanitarian law rules on detention rules, article rule number 120, children must be detained in separate quarters from those of adults except where the families are accommodated as family units. Article 124, ICRC must be granted regular access to all persons deprived of their liberty. And our rule number 125 focuses that persons deprived of their liberty must be allowed to correspond with their family. From all of above discussion, we can understand that a child is a fundamental unit of the society and he is entitled to have spatial protection and he must be provided with peace and love. And we all are responsible towards the child. And the true character of a society is revealed in how it treats its children. Therefore, we must respect child, we must provide them love and a peaceful, humanly environment. Thank you.